Good morning. Grace and peace to you and greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship on this rather cloudy, cool May morning. I, when I moved here, they say, well, you know what they say about May. It may rain, it may snow, it may be beautiful. Welcome to worship on this day. We begin our service with news and announcements about the life of our church together, its service and ministry. And so calling your attention to a few of the things, especially in this yellow uh, insert in your bulletin, one that is not on there and pertains to the elders is that immediately after worship, we will be re meeting in the youth room uh, to uh, meet our confirmands. Um, as you may or may not know, Jordan has been working with the confirmation class. They will be joining the church on June 5th, which is Pentecost Sunday. That is a big day in the life of the church. It is the birthday of the church, so you are all encouraged to wear red. So Kathleen, as an example, maybe you should just, yes, perfectly appropriate. And the shoes are jamming as well. June 5th. Um, and then uh, just a couple more things. This week, and Jordan is leading worship and Ray is in there, this week is the baby shower. So it'll be, amen, it'll be Wednesday. Um, at 6.30, so we have cookies and punch. Um, if you have not um, been, a, been in touch with anybody about a gift or if you just want to contribute an amount, you can put it in an envelope in the office. We will put tally it all together. And anything left over that is not used for purchasing gifts, we can give them gift cards or I think a big envelope of cash money is always really nice too, especially when you're um, getting ready for a baby. So. If you have not done so, the deadline is tomorrow. Uh, if you can make that happen, just email or text me or come on in. And if you've already done it, thank you. Uh, please have the gifts unwrapped and, unwrapped and we will have um, a, a chance to all enjoy them together. There are cards in the narthex that have an announcement about the baby shower and also a little card that, sa that says um, a baby boy and on the back, it's the best parenting advice you've ever received and the worst parenting advice you've ever received. So we're gonna share those, a few of those at the baby shower. And also, we're asking people to bring in a picture of yourself as a baby. Write your name on the back, we're gonna hang it on clothespins, and people are going to guess. So if you've changed, uh, it might be something fun. So if you have a baby picture, we're gonna clip those to a few clotheslines and so we can enjoy and, and remember the time, perhaps when we were young, uh, let's see, there, uh, there is a listening set. The uh, mission study committee is now is continuing our process of the listening sessions. So today there are two more. They were well attended last week. Thank you so much for coming and giving your thoughts and ideas and opinions. Um, we are so looking forward to continuing this uh, discussion. So today, two sessions, one will be in room A. Uh, so anybody in room A, you can wave if you don't know where that is. It's back there. And the other one will be in the upper portion of the Westminster room um, wh where the table is in front of the big windows. And so those two. The next sessions will be, uh, there is one Wednesday, the same day as the baby shower. That's going to be at 5.30 right before, so you can come for that and stay. And on June uh, first at 6.30 and a Zoom session on Sunday, June 5th. So we hope to get everybody, we hope to get 100% participation. So if you have not um, been part of those listening sessions, please, please do join us at some point. There, uh, one more announcement, the Nexus uh, Peace Ranch, um, Sunday, May 29th. If you are available and would like to go, um, that is at the Hoosier, on Hoosier Valley Road at the Peace Ranch SOS. Bring a picnic lunch. Uh, you'll be we're working from 9.30 to 12.30, and that's a wonderful way to take our love and ministry out into the world. Are there any other announcements? Then let us be gathered together to worship God. God is good. Very good, all the time. God is good.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus said, those who love me will keep my word, and my Abba will love them. We will come to them and make our home with them. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. Great and loving God, your will for us in Jesus is the peace which the world cannot give. Your abiding gift is the advocate he promised. Calm all troubled hearts, dispel every fear. Keep us steadfast in love and faithful to your word that we may always be your dwelling place. Amen. Friends, the spirit bird of hope is freed for flying. Our cages of despair will no longer keep us closed and life-denying. And so we join in confession in this great truth. As Jesus is our hope, let us contemplate his love and God's mercies as we speak the truth of our lives. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. 
we confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Let us continue in silent prayer. The Lord who hears every prayer, hear our prayer. Friends, hear these words of assurance. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. So great is his love for those who fear him as far as the east is from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Great and loving God, your will for us in Jesus is the peace which the world cannot give. Your abiding gift is the advocate he promised. Calm all troubled hearts. Dispel every fear. Keep us steadfast in love and faithful to your word that we may always be your dwelling place. Amen. Amen. The scripture this morning can be found in your pew Bible. First Psalm 13, Old Testament, page 384. Feel free to follow along. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O oh Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken, but I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. In our New Testament reading, on page 83 of your pew Bible, is John 14, verses 25 through 27. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The word of the Lord.
I'd like to invite all the young and the young at heart to join me down here at the communion table. Or how about young at heart? Older in heart? Good morning, Carol. Let's all sit here. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. So, um, I'm Leslie and you have to tell me your names. I'm gonna take this off so people can hear me better. And you are? Kayla. Kaylissa? Nice to meet you, Kaylissa. And? And Kaya and Carol. This is very alliterative. I love it. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about peace. Okay? So you sort of know what it is, right? Have you ever done this? Peace, right? Peace out. You know, I know somebody does, does that, right? I don't know. Um, so I wanted to show you a couple things. So what do you think of when you think of peace? Harmony. Harmony. Calm, calmness, maybe, you know, so, so we'll let the Holy Spirit respond too. What do you think of when you think of peace? Warmth? No war? There's a lot, and uh, maybe sort of, I, so I brought some things to help us, to help me remind me of peace. So I have this, so I'll, I'll pass it to you and you can pass it down. So it's a, it's a shell with other shells in it. And some pretty rocks because when I'm at the, with, at the water, that's when I feel really peaceful, right? So I hear those waves or, or I look at the sand or it's just a place to just be. And then a friend gave me this. She knew I was, she said, well, you just moved. I'll give you this. So it says soothing herbal. Smell this. Nice, huh? Strong. That's why I didn't light it. <laughs> I, not yet, but I will. Um, so, you know, sometimes we, we, we feel, don't feel peaceful. Sometimes it helps to light a candle. What are other things you do to, make, to help yourself feel peaceful? What? Um, you can... With things you do, are you thinking of something that you did? that you can do? Yeah. There's relax. Yeah, there's some things some people do. Some people exercise. Some people take naps. Yes? Some people meditate and, and pray. Well, one of the things that Jesus was talking about when he sat at, this, when he sat at a table on the night before that he was uh, betrayed and arrested, he was talking to his, to his disciples about peace. And he said, Peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. They had no idea what he was talking about. What do you think he was talking about? It's hard, right? Especially because they had no idea what he was, say, what he was talking about. But when Jesus talks about peace, he was talking about the way that we feel when we're calm. And that sometimes we, and how do you get that feeling sometimes? Do you ever listen to music? How about, um, have you ever prayed and felt calmer after you've prayed? No. Sometimes, has anybody else prayed and then started to laugh or cry when they were in prayer? How many? Yeah. So sometimes praying can really change things for us. When Jesus talked about giving peace, he said, it's not a peace that the world recognizes. It's a peace that that only he can give. So sometimes it's hard to define it, right? So I have these little cards which help me remember things that, that give me peace. And so you see I have them in the bottom here. So what I'd like you to do is take one and read out that, um, that what's on the other side of it. So Carol, you can do it too. Delight. Delight. So Carol got delight. Spontaneity, woo, that's a big one. It's a $5 word. Yeah. And how about you? Forgiveness. 
So all of these things, to, so in fact, we could pick any word and talk about if we practice that, it could bring us peace. So forgiveness, what if you forgave? So if you forgave a friend or a friend forgave you, that would bring you peace? Yeah? Have you ever been forgiven or had to forgive somebody? Yeah. So how did you feel afterward? It's hard to describe, but you knew it when you felt it, right? That's, I think, the peace that Jesus was talking about. How about delight? How do you feel, I'm Carol? It makes you happy, right? So, and that's, that's peaceful too. That's a peace that Jesus gives. And how about that $5 word that you got, Kayla? Spontaneity. Do you know what spontaneity means? Holy Spirit, what does spontaneity mean? Not planned. Not planned. Spur of the moment. Right now, right? All of those things too. Sometimes we're, we have feeling of peace and we didn't even expect it. Like when we're watching a sunset or listening to music or petting our dog or cat or getting a hug from our moms or dads or brothers maybe your, or siblings. I, I know, maybe, maybe not now, but you'll like it later on. All of these things can give us peace. Sometimes peace that we can't really define, but we know it when we feel it. And I think that's what Jesus is talking about, especially when it comes through prayer and times that we're aware of God's love all around us. So even if we can't say what peace is, we know it and we can share it, even before we have a definition. Sound good? Can we practice? All right, we'll give it a shot. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you for giving us your peace. Even if we don't know how to describe it, we can still experience it and we can share it with everyone you love and everyone that we love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks all. The scripture for this morning is from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus has said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way 
as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. While we are waiting, come, Holy Spirit. While we are waiting, Lord Jesus, speak. While we are waiting, Creator, open us to your word and to your will. Amen. We celebrate this week the Feast of the Ascension. Ascension officially happens 40 days after Easter, so it falls on a Thursday this year. So Thursday, look up. And then it's followed by the season and the Feast of Pentecost on Sunday, June 5th. That will be 50 days of Easter tide. And so thinking about this time in between, between Easter, the great 50 days of Easter, and in the time that we are waiting for the birth of the church, the celebration of the Holy Spirit, it gives us pause to think about waiting and perhaps patient. When I got to seminary, we were picking out courses and I met with some advisors and they said to me, well, you have to take Hebrew and Greek and you can do those year long, uh, but you also have the opportunity to take them in the summer. And so they said, well, for example, you could do Hebrews over two semesters, or you could do uh, Hebrew over two semesters, Hebrew one and two, and all of the exegetical work that comes with that, learning the language, the vocabulary, the grammar, and becoming, at least be able to read the Masoretic text. And they said, in Greek, you can do the same thing, or you could take Greek over the summer in eight weeks, six credits. And I bought it. <laughs> so I took Greek in the summer for eight weeks, three hours of class every morning, a test every day to see what you had learned from the day before, an exam every Friday, eight weeks, five days a week. And so like the psalmist, I began to say, how long, O oh Lord? <laughs> it's a good question, isn't it? How long will this last? We have certainly asked it in this time. Certainly, we have wondered how long this time that we are in would last. Nadia Boltz Weber, a Lutheran pastor, wrote about her journey of waiting in the first few months of the pandemic. She said, here's a confession. I realize now that when this global pandemic all started, I think I was trying to be as optimistic as possible, believing it the best way to get through. So I told myself, it's okay to spend a couple of weeks at home because after this, we'll be able to go to Holy Week services. Then it was, well, I still can't wait to preach Pentecost at the cathedral at the end of May. Maybe not. Then it was, well, at least my gigs in June will still happen. Maybe not. Then it was, well, okay, not the June gigs, but the July ones for sure. Maybe not. Then it was, geez, at least there's that festival every September that I love. Maybe not. Then a friend who was in the music business mentioned that the concert promoters are all saying fall 2021 is the earliest they think we can return to concerts, festivals, and big events. And that exact same day, I read a piece about how dangerous singing is. And then even if we do get to go to church again this year, there can't be singing. I had hooked my hope on something in the future, and as each hope dissolved, I'd find another hook until finally reality sunk in. And then I spent the rest of that day and most of the next alternately, alternately worrying about the future and watching about 62 hours of television. And here we are, year three. 
Impatience is defined as not patient. Maybe you've experienced this. I had a friend say, I've stopped praying for patience because God keeps giving me situations that test it. <laughs> Sometimes we think of patience as merely, or as, yes, patience as really impatient stretched to its finite degree. And certainly, we are in a season where we may not be as patient as we once were. I think we have lost some of those bandwidths that we used to have, maybe some tolerance, maybe we're restless or short of temper, especially under irritation, delay, or opposition. Impatience is also defined as eagerly desirous. Maybe perhaps you can relate. But anyone here in the 14th month of the 14th year of the pandemic, I'm only exaggerating a little, but what about gifts? Those gifts of impatience, surely, we are almost there. How long, O oh Lord? And then we, yes, we have good news. We are vaccinated and boosted, and there are more and more people joining. We have come back to church. We are celebrating. We have health measures. We can keep the doors open. We are well into the season of discernment with the holy cow. Confirmation is needing. We have programs. We have the play series. We have the understanding racial justice. We are active and engaged. We have come back. And yet, we're still wearing masks. We're still questioning each decision. We have to go backward and forward in terms of how we behave. A friend of mine and her colleague were going through some rough times professionally and personally, and they remembered that old tired saying, God's timing is perfect timing. They decided God's watch was broken. <laughs> Maybe the difference between patience and impatience is not an either or, but a both and. We fall on that continuum on any given time of the day. So perhaps this has happened to you. Maybe you're at a stoplight, noticing the man in the car in front of you scratching his left ear. Maybe you're checking out at the CVS and a young woman in front of you snaps her gum as the woman in front of her at the counter presses the wrong button on the card reader and has to start over. Or you had a moment to watch a child become absorbed in the texture of grass and the delight of a ladybug. You smell the aroma of cooking and know that it is not yet time to eat. gifts of impatience or patience. They are simply attitudes of waiting. And our attitudes of waiting can vary on how we are feeling, how we slept, what we did, what we want to do. In this passage in the book of Acts, Jesus has ordered the disciples not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father and the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And then when they are all together again, for the last time in person, as it turns out, Jesus is speaking, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Not now, but soon. Wait. And while he's saying this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and the disciples stand there gazing up until angels come and politely ask them what they are doing. I think admirably refraining from commenting on slack jaws or open mouths. They are in fact waiting. Not quite sure what to do or where to go or how to be. This is where the waiting begins for them and for us. The Feast of the Ascension seems like a holy pause. The disciples are to wait for the promise to be fulfilled, and that is what they are doing. 
To me, this says we're pretty okay with the beginning of waiting, perhaps not so much if it starts to stretch a little longer. At the Ascension Chapel in Jerusalem, the chapel and the altar surrounds the Rock of Ascension. There is a little depression in that rock. And there is another rock in the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Both of those places where Jesus' feet left the earth are sacred to Christians and Muslims, one footprint in the, uh, here in the Ascension Chapel in Jerusalem, the other in the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And that is where Jesus was lifted up to heaven, the final imprint of his foot as he rose. People worship there. And I think, I hope that we are all praying for patience, but I have been in that Ascension Chapel and it seemed to be the place where a holy pause could in fact happen. There's another Ascension Chapel it's in the shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham in England. And it's not on the ground, but there is a circular medallion in the ceiling, in the dome, above the altar, that surrounds a sculpture. Now the sculpture is in the ceiling of Jesus' feet. Just the parts north of the heels, in other words, just his ten toes dangling down, complete with nail imprints, dangling out of the ceiling. The Ascension Chapel. Maybe we need these visual reminders that yes, the Holy Spirit is coming, that yes, part of the waiting is part of our call, but still, how long, O oh Lord? Because it's been a long time we have seemed to be in a permanent waiting stage. And yet, we are also called to be in this moment. I had a mentor who said, whenever you get tangled up in life's decisions and are fretting, just look down at your feet. You're right where you're supposed to be. I didn't like hearing that at first, but I have come to believe that there is wisdom there. The scripture has us waiting for the Holy Spirit because we are to be equipped, are equipped to go out into the world. I think there's a distinction to be made too between enforced waiting and intentional waiting. Perhaps our journey as people of faith is to realize that the enforced waiting can become intentional depending upon our attitude toward it. If we can move emotionally, spiritually, intellectually into an attitude of this right now is where we are supposed to be, even if we don't like it, then perhaps we can notice God's timing, God's gifts, God's graces in the time that we are actually in. For how many of us are always on to the next thing? How many of us are really fully in our bodies at all times? We're often thinking about where we're supposed to be. What's the next thing, right? We're always moving, moving, moving. And this intentional waiting can be an invitation to be and to notice that God is indeed at work. Elizabeth Musser, in her book, Words Unspoken, writes of this practice of intentional waiting. He forced his mind clear of other thoughts and waited. Stillness, he had learned, did not come naturally. He practiced it. Sometimes as he waited, he heard the, Lord, he heard the Lord's voice coursing through his spirit almost audibly. Other times he heard nothing. But sometimes he felt filled up and satisfied and understood. I have practiced this a few times. Sometimes it's been more fruitful, in other words, more benefits for me than others. Sometimes I have felt satisfied, sometimes I just thought about the next thing. Sometimes we're like the guy in the cartoon that I saw in the Presbyterian Outlook. It's uh, a bunch of disciples and there's one 
guy that's looking around, all of the others are looking up. And the one guy is saying, where, where? And it's, captained, it's captioned, ascension deficit disorder. <laughs> Sorry. I have more. <laughs> but if we focus on what we're doing right now, if we focus on the work of justice and peace and our activity and our waiting, this puts us right where we're supposed to be in this time of waiting also for God to move, for God to act, and being in partnership with the preparation of the Holy Spirit to move and to act. For the coming of the Spirit is a fearful and wondrous thing, and it takes preparation. In the next few weeks, we will continue to be dreaming big about the future of this community, the mission study team, and the listening sessions, and then moving forward into small groups. What do we want to see, to be, to do? Our discussions will help us write the story on our information form. Who are we? How have we come to be? And perhaps the new story of how the Presbyterian Church of Traverse City has come through this enormously long waiting time. Waiting is and has not been passive. We have been tapped into a new depth. Perhaps this time as a nation has given us time to look and to read and to discover who we are and who we want to be. We are part of that. Last week, a colleague and my beloved the Reverend Stanley Jenkins, took a vote with his session on reparations. They voted $100,000 in reparations work. I texted and said, how are you? And he said, I could cry. That did not happen overnight. That was over five years of planning. It began with relationships. It began with book study groups between different churches. It began with fellowship, with prayer. It began with hard conversations. It began with people who did not understand each other or each other's food or background or history. But they came together over time. And now, and now their work begins. Now the Holy Spirit has moved, and now they have to decide how and where the money goes. It's exciting. Waiting, we know it. We can say, how long, O oh Lord? We know what it is to wait. We know what it is to wait, not just for the small stuff, but the big stuff too, and not just the work of the church, Maybe you've experienced waiting for a call from the doctor with results from the tests. That's a holy and sacred kind of waiting. Maybe the sound of your teenager coming into the house at night. Maybe waiting for the birth of the baby and the first phone calls and cell phone pictures. Maybe waiting between the breaths of a beloved that grow longer and longer. God is always inviting us into the holy pause. If we keep focusing on there, we'll miss what's happening here. In the movie, My Octopus Teacher, have you seen it on PBS? Spoiler alert. A man spends a year waiting on an octopus. Off the coast of South Africa, he dives into the kelp forest every day for 324 days, waiting for her, observing her, making a tenuous and then a playful and then a loving connection for she begins to recognize his presence and him as she lives and hunts and plays and escapes from predators and he marvels at her ingenuity and adaptability. At one point, she actually becomes comfortable enough to rest her body on his chest right over his heart as he gently touches the top of her head. 
Ultimately, he patiently waits as she draws near the end of her life, mating and hatching her young, then stopping eating, and then beginning to die. I wept at his patience and his restraint as he lets nature take its course. Afterward, he continues to return to the place just to remember that this beautiful, intelligent creature once lived there. But he has also formed a community of divers who have taken on the conservation and care of the kelp forest and its environs. His waiting has become an action and a purpose that he could not have imagined. We are being called to new purpose and new action, even if the pandemic and now the endemic has not felt like a holy pause. Surely we, in the midst of struggle and heartbreak and death, can recognize the patience of God meeting our own impatience, meeting us with gifts and graces that we would not otherwise have seen or imagined. How long, O oh Lord, is the question that invites us into right now. We are in the in-between, and that is called faith. Between the already and the not yet. And so on this Feast of the Ascension, let us look up to the heavens. Let us look down at our feet. Let us look around at our broken and beautiful world, waiting for the Spirit to come again and again and again. The resurrection continues. Thanks be to God. Amen.
please be seated. We come to the part of our service with joys and concerns. I'd like to welcome back the mission trip volunteers. If you're here, wave your hand if you survived. I expect many are resting this day. What do we need to pray for today? Who do we need to lift up? What are you grateful for? The people of Galen. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, Elliot. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Elliot. Yes, and that is on your yellow sheet. Uh, there is a website that you can go to. Um, and so, Reverend Kathy Chang and Juan Lopez. Thank you. Kathleen. Say, say again. Lilacs in bloom. Lilacs in bloom, yes. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. In this holy pause, Lord, as we speak to you, we know that you are forming words in our hearts so that even when we do not have the words, your grace can pour through us and your spirit can speak through us. And so thank you for the gift of prayer, spoken and unspoken, that we can pray and worship in freedom without fear of reprisal, in safety, among our friends. And so we pray for those across the globe for whom worship is a dangerous and secret task those for whom spreading your name has repercussions. We lift up Juan and Kathy and all those who are at the displeasure of the government. For we know, Lord, that your truth and your word has power, but as human beings, we sometimes feel so powerless. And so give them protection and care, give them courage and fortitude, give them allies and friends. We thank you, Lord, for our homes, for the beauty of spring, and Lord, we pray for the people of Galen, for those who have lost family members, for those who have been injured, and for the businesses that have been affected. We ask, Lord, for your guidance and for your patience and humor as they seek to rebuild, as they seek financial assistance. And we pray for those places across our country that have been at the mercy of flood and fire. We pray for the earth as this climate is heating, as we work towards sustainability, open our hearts for your justice, for everything that lives and moves and breathes. We thank you for the beauty of lilacs. We thank you for good will among nations for Sweden and Finland, for the work of the United Nations, for the work of NATO, for the work of our president seeking to build alliances, for the work of diplomats, and for the work of local 
elected officials. We thank you, Lord, for our process and that all voices are heard. We pray for you to give us grace so that we may be in dialogue with those with whom we disagree. We pray your peace over us all. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to receive our offering this morning, I also invite you to fill out the friendship pads, which are located at the ends of the pews, and to pass those along so that we may take note of who, you, who is here this morning. And as you do so, you might say to each other, I'm so glad that you're here today. Let us receive our tithes and our gifts.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you have given to us everything, and so we return a portion to you. Bless it to the sacred purposes that you intend. Bless us to your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. go in peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord's face, may it shine on you. May the Lord look deep into your eyes and give you peace. And may that peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds at rest in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.